In this video, I will be going over the concept of natural logarithms or ln of x. So before we dive into what natural logarithms are, we first have to understand what the letter or number e represents. So e is essentially an irrational number that equals to 2.71828 and this goes on forever. And you can think of this kind of as a number that's similar to pi, where pi is 3.14159 and it tells us a lot about circles. E essentially is an irrational number that also goes on forever and this tells us about rates. But we don't really need to know what E does at this point. All we need to know is that E is an irrational number and it equals to 2.718 blah blah blah. So a natural logarithm is essentially any log taken to the base of e. So any log to the base e of let's say x is considered to be a natural logarithm and this is usually written as ln of x. So ln is essentially the same thing as saying log to the base e. So anyway natural logs aren't necessarily super hard to comprehend or understand. It's essentially just a different way of writing the log to the base of e. Now, let's do a few simple operations or questions involving natural logarithms. Let's solve for ln of e. Now, what this is essentially saying is log to the base e of e. So e to some power x is equal to e. So e to the power of x is equal to e. And this is to the power of 1. So we know that x is equal to 1. So ln of e is equal to 1. Let's try another simple equation. Let's say we have to find ln of e squared. So once again, we know that we are essentially taking log to the base e of e squared and saying that this is equal to some number x. So e to the power of x, e to the power of x is equal to e squared x is equal to 2, therefore this expression over here is equal to 2. So once again ln or the natural logarithm is the same thing as log to the base of e where e is equal to 2.71282 going on to infinity. Now it's important to know what both the graphs of e to the power of x and ln look like, so I'll just quickly sketch both of those for you. Let's get our y-axis and our x-axis. And you don't really have to memorize each and every point, you just have to know the general pattern that the graph follows. So in the case of y is equal to e to the power of x, it'll look something like this where this goes up until infinity and this goes on until infinity and the value right over here is 1. Now if we look over here on the negative x-axis or on this side of our graph then we notice that the graph of e to the power of x never actually touches this value or never touches the value of y is equal to 0. So this is y, this is x and this is because, well, if you think about it, e taken to the power of x will always be greater than zero because no matter what value you have of x, it'll be, our overall value will still be greater than zero. And over here, it just goes up and up and up and up until it reaches some incredibly high value or it just goes on until infinity. I'm sorry, I just noticed that I messed up my x and y axis labels. So this is the x axis and this is the y axis. So anyway, we also know that over here at the point where x is equal to 0, so right over here, or right here actually, the value for, or a y value, or a value for e to the power of x is 1, because any number taken to the power of 0 is equal to 1. Okay, so what about the graph of ln of x? Now before we actually draw the graph, we first need to understand what the relationship between e to the power of x and ln of x are. And if you recall, ln of x is essentially log to the base e of x is equal to 
y, so e to the power of y is equal to x. And our other equation, or for this graph, is e to the power of x is equal to y. So e, oops. So e to the power of x is equal to y. And if you compare these two equations, you'll see that the only difference is that the x position and the y position in both equations was swapped around. So ln of x is essentially the inverse of e to the power of x. And using what we know from the chapter of functions, inverse function graphs are essentially a reflection of the graph or the original graph in the line y is equal to x. So to draw ln of so to draw the graph of ln of x or log base e of x, we simply need to reflect this graph. And we'll get something that looks like this where this value is 1, this never, or the value of x never equals to 0, and this goes on until infinity. So that's it. All you really have to know is that ln of x is essentially the same thing as saying log to the base e of x, and that this is what the graph of ln of x and e to the power of x look like.